In this video, we will see one nice result that follows from the linear algebraic view we developed last time, called the gilbert varshamov or GV bound. The GV bound establishes the existence of codes with a good trade-off between rate and distance. Here's the statement of the gilbert varshamov bound. It says that for any prime power q, and for any n and d, so that d is less than or equal to n, there exists a linear code c that has length n, alphabet size q, and distance d, and rate r, remember that's k divided by n, which is at least this expression, 1 minus the log base q of the qary volume of the Hamming ball of radius d minus 1 in n-dimensional space, minus 1, all divided by n. This is the version of the theorem that we'll prove, with prime power and linear here, but in fact, the statement is also true without those things. Let's compare this to the Hamming bound that we saw before. The Hamming bound says that for any code C, with length n and distance d, and alphabet size q, the rate r of that code is at most something that looks a lot like this. It was 1 minus the log base q of the qary volume of the Hamming ball of radius d minus 1 over 2, the floor of that, in n-dimensional space, all divided by n. So there are a few differences between the gilbert varshamov bound and the Hamming bound. The most important difference is that these inequalities are going the opposite way. That is, the Hamming bound is an impossibility result. It says that we cannot come up with a code with rate that is too large. On the other hand, the gilbert varshamov bound is a possibility result. It says that there exist codes with decent rate. The second difference between these two bounds is this here, the difference between d minus 1 and d minus 1 over 2. If we ignore this little minus 1 here, which doesn't really matter because it's getting divided by n and we think of n as kind of large, that's the main quantitative difference between these two expressions. Both of these expressions might be pretty inscrutable, like what is the log base q of the qary volume of a Hamming ball of a particular radius, uh, but we're going to return to them later. For now, just pause the video and convince yourself that this thing is smaller than this thing. That is good, because if it were the other way around, then well, math would be broken, this would be a contradiction. For the rest of this video, let's prove the gilbert varshamov bound. Here's the proof idea. We're going to choose a random linear code C of the appropriate rate, and then we're going to show that the probability that this random code C has good distance is positive, strictly greater than zero. That will imply that there exists a code that has that good distance, because if we draw a random one with some positive probability, we'll get it. This approach is called the probabilistic method. It shows up a lot in coding theory. Okay, so let's get started. First, let k be equal to n minus the log base q of the qary volume of a Hamming ball of radius d minus 1 in fq to the n, minus 1. Notice that if we choose k like this, then k divided by n is exactly that rate expression that was in the statement of the GV bound. Now, we're going to choose a random linear code c of dimension k. That is, C is going to be a uniformly random subspace of fq to the n. Notice that there are only finitely many subspaces of fq to the n, because everything in sight is finite, so just pick a uniformly random one of them. That's what I mean by a uniformly random subspace. Now, let G in fq to the n by k be a random generator matrix for C. That is, as we discussed before, a code might have multiple generator matrices, just pick one of them at random. Essentially, this is taking a random basis for the subspace C and using that for the columns of G. Okay, now we have this random subspace, and our goal is to show that it has distance at least D with non-zero probability. To do this, let's record a useful fact. The useful fact is that for any fixed X that's non-zero, the vector G times X for this random matrix G is uniformly distributed in fq to the n except for 0. 
That is, if I fix some x, any non-zero x, and I multiply it by my random matrix, I'm going to get some random vector. And this useful fact is saying that that random vector is equally likely to be any non-zero thing in fq to the n. For an informal proof of this useful fact, well, there's so much symmetry going on, like how could it be anything other than uniformly distributed? But it's a good exercise to prove this useful fact formally, and I encourage you to stop the video now and give it a try. Okay, hopefully you now believe the useful fact, so let's carry on with our proof. Remember, we want to show that the distance of this random code c is at least d with non-zero probability. So let's compute the distance of this code c. So the distance of our code c, because it's a linear code, is the minimum weight of any non-zero code word. And another way of writing that is that this is the minimum over all x in fq to the k, except 0, of the weight of g times x. Now we can use our fact for any fixed x that's non-zero, the probability that the weight of g times x is less than d, well, this is the probability that g times x lands in the Hamming ball of radius d minus 1 about the center 0. Actually, I think my notation maybe had it the other way around. OK, either way, you know what I mean. The Hamming ball centered at 0 of radius d minus 1. So why is this true? Well, this is just the set of all vectors of weight less than d, and that's exactly what this says. OK, well, what is this probability? By the useful fact, this vector is uniformly distributed. So that means the probability that it lands in this ball is basically just the volume of that Hamming ball divided by the volume of the whole space. So this is the uh, QRE volume of the Hamming ball of radius d minus 1 in n-dimensional space, I guess minus 1 because we're not including 0, divided by the number of points it could possibly be, which is q to the n minus 1. And just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to ignore those minus 1s, so I'll just say that this is less than or equal to the QRE volume of the Hamming ball of radius d minus 1 in fq to the n divided by q to the n. Actually, to save space, I'm just going to do that in line. So erase those 1s and change that equal to a less than or equal to. OK, so now we want to know the probability that there is any x so that the weight of g times x is less than d. Well, let's do the union bound. So by the union bound, the probability that there exists some x in fq to the k other than 0, such that the weight of g times x is less than d. Well, this is less than or equal to the number of such x times the probability that this event occurs for that x. How many x are there? Well, there's at most q to the k of them. Actually, there's q to the k minus 1 of them. And then I'm just going to copy down this probability. At this point, what we want to show is that this probability here is strictly less than 1. Indeed, if we could show this, then that would mean that the probability that our code does not have good distance is strictly less than 1, and so therefore the probability that our code has good distance is strictly greater than 0. And that will imply that there exists a code with good distance and will be done. So let's see if this is true. So let's take the log base q of both sides, and we see that we need k minus n plus the log base q of the QRE volume of the ball of radius d minus 1 in n-dimensional space should be strictly less than 0. Or moving things around, we want to know is k strictly less than n minus the log base q of the QRE volume of the Hamming ball of radius d minus 1. And in fact it is, because conveniently, we chose k to be precisely that minus 1. So therefore, this is true. Yes. So this one's true too. Yes. And therefore, the probability that this random linear code, this random k-dimensional subspace, has distance at least d, is strictly greater than 0, therefore such a code exists. So that proves that gilbert varshamov bound. So returning to the statement here, we can put a check there. Now we know that there exist at least decent linear codes. 
This formula is still pretty hard to parse, though. We'll return to it in a later video to try to make sense of it.